Okay, which photo do you think is taken on the new iPhone 14 Pro? The right image. This one. I think B is taken by iPhone 14 Pro. Am I right? right? Wrong. Okay, so today we have the world's highest 200 megapixel camera, Moto Edge 30 Ultra. So you get a 200 megapixel main camera, 50 megapixel ultra wide, 12 megapixel 2x telephoto, and a 60 megapixel front selfie camera. I'm mean, like, what? A total of 332 megapixel. Like this is a feast of megapixels. But the question that has to be asked is, is this 200 megapixel a gimmick? Well, let's go. So we are out here in real life conditions to test the camera of the Moto S30 Ultra and we are putting it against the newly released iPhone 14 Pro. So can the Moto S30 Ultra beat the iPhone 14 Pro? Now you'll be like, Prati, come on. We know the iPhone 14 Pro is better. Well, my friend, you are in for a surprise. First up is the main camera. On Moto, you have a 200 megapixel main sensor, while on the iPhone, you get a 48 megapixel main sensor. And the biggest advantage of having a 200 megapixel sensor is that you can crop into this photo after clicking it and see the iPhone 14 Pro is barely usable, like it's all pixelated at this point, while the Moto still retains detail. You can make out it's me far, far better. And this is not one-off case. Same goes with this picture too. If I zoom in, the text on Moto S30 Ultra appears better. Motorola's 200 megapixel camera is definitely sharper. But how does this 200 megapixel photo work? Well, in simple words, there is a feature called pixel binning and let me explain it to you in very simple words. Like see, you take this paper and hold it in front of the light. Now consider this round paper to be your sensor. So now this is the amount of light you can see through the other side. Now if I increase the size of the hole, you can see more. Pixel binning sort of works in the same way. What it does it, it brings multiple this size paper hole together or pixels and combines them to make one giant paper hole or pixel. So you get more light, which is equal to better photos. And by the way, all 48 megapixel, 64 megapixel, 108 megapixel cameras do the same trick. They convert their maximum pixel to give an output of 12 megapixel. But you would be like, Pratik, why would I want to take pictures at 12 megapixel when I can shoot in 200 megapixel? Well, first see here, the size of a 200 megapixel photo is like 73 MB, while the size of a 12 megapixel photo is just 4 MB. So you get more storage. And second, with this 200 megapixel camera, you get much better low light performance. Like, see this picture? The Moto S30 Ultra is better. It is sharper, has better colors. It is pretty evident that the Moto takes better photos and consistently in low light. Same goes with this picture too. Motorola's photo looks more bright and vibrant. The iPhone appears to look a bit dull. And see this picture? If you zoom in 100%, the HDR in low light is better on Motorola. You can probably see the bulb. And speaking of HDR, Moto S30 Ultra seems to have better HDR overall. Like see this particular picture where we clicked against harsh sunlight. iPhone's photos look brighter, but see where the sun is? It has completely overexposed the sky. Again, in this picture of me, like iPhone 14 Pro is way off, but Moto's HDR has properly exposed the face, grass, clouds, and sky. And we click this picture multiple times and every time Moto S30 Ultra just blew us away with the result. So Moto S30 Ultra seems to be sharper, better in low light and has better HDR. So that's like a clear win for Motorola, right? Right? Well, here's where the fun starts. If you come to the normal 12 megapixel camera mode, this is where you will see the iPhone is very consistent. Like first off, see this photo. The Moto's photo is a bit bluish. Like we click this photo in bright daylight and the iPhone's photo looks more natural or close to natural. Same for this picture too. If you see iPhone's photo is quite punchy. It has more details if you zoom in. Moto's photo looks slightly washed off. And we even noticed minor color shift between the main lens and the ultra wide angle lens on the Moto S30 Ultra. But there was no color shift on the iPhone. Even coming to video, the Moto S30 Ultra can shoot up to 8K 30fps, which is crazy sharp and insane. Whereas the iPhone 14 Pro can only do maximum 4K 60fps. But honestly, most of the times you'll be shooting in 4K 30fps. And at that resolution, the Moto's video seemed to be pretty decent. But yes, the iPhone 14 Pro's video is way better better stabilization, better color reproduction, and overall a better video package. And the story is same with the ultra wide angle camera as well. iPhone's color science is better than Motorola. Like see this picture, it looks very close to real life. Moto's photo looks a bit dull, but again, Moto has better HDR implementation. Like see this picture, S30 Ultra has properly exposed the sun too. In the iPhone, it looks overexposed. So consistently the HDR on Motorola is better, more of like that 
pixel like hdr now both the phones use their ultra wide angle lens to shoot in macro so in moto you get that 50 megapixel ultra wide angle camera while on the iphone you have 12 megapixel and see this flower picture the pictures from moto and iphone looks very artistic like the background blur that they produce more dslr like and see this photo the texture on the bark is so good on both the phones but again, Moto's photo appears to be a bit washed out. Well, both the phones have a 12 megapixel dedicated telephoto camera. iPhone has a 3x optical zoom, while Moto S30 Ultra has 2x zoom. Now the iPhone's picture look more eye-pleasing, vibrant, while Moto's photo look slightly washed off. Same goes with this picture too. The iPhone's colors are better. Coming to the front camera, the Moto S30 Ultra has a 60 megapixel selfie camera, whereas the iPhone 14 Pro has a 12 megapixel selfie camera. And that difference in megapixel shows, like the 60 megapixel selfie is really sharp. Also, Moto has better HDR and even the background is well exposed. And both phones can record in 4K 30fps, so you can have an idea of the video quality as well as the mic quality. I'm outside, there is a bit of wind. Coming to extra features, well, iPhone 14 Pro has this awesome action mode, which can record super steady videos at 2.8K. Also, iPhone has this cinematic mode. Here, you can do cinematic mode at 4K 30fps and trust me, as a content creator with enough lighting, you can get away with this footage. Which blurs the background and keeps you in focus. It's basically a portrait mode, but in 4K on the iPhone and look at it. It looks really good. On the other hand, on the Moto S30 Ultra, you have this dual capture mode where you can record videos from the rear as well as the front camera at the same time. Vloggers may find this mode useful. Like you can take videos of a subject and talk about it at the same time with the face shot in there. Saves time in the edit. Also in Motorola, there is this spot color mode for photos and videos where, have a look, you can pick a color and every other color will become black and white except for that particular color. It could be a fun and creative way to shoot reels or stories. Another interesting thing that I noticed in Motorola is when you are in portrait mode, see here, there is a mention of 35mm, 50mm and 85mm. All you photography nerds out there will really appreciate this. So what's the conclusion? Well, the iPhone 14 Pro is a 1.3 lakh device and the Moto S30 Ultra sells for 52999. You can get it for less than 50,000 in sales with bank offers, cashback. And Motorola has been doing good for the past one year, but in the camera department, they were average. But with this Moto S30 Ultra, and the 200 megapixel camera, it is a massive upgrade. For half of the price, it even beats iPhone 14 Pro in HDR and low light photos. It is probably one of the best cameras in a smartphone at this price range. Also, this is an unpopular opinion. Unlike DSLRs, smartphone cameras are now 50% hardware and 50% software. And Motorola has nailed the 50% hardware part this time around. And the 50% software improvements take some time. They are better. And if they keep tweaking it with future updates, then the camera would get even better. And for Apple, see with every new iPhone, Apple tweaks the camera software a bit more. So they have quite a lot of experience in the camera software, like 13 years of experience. And that shows in the consistency of photos. But if you think 200 megapixel is a gimmick, well, surprise, surprise, it's not. It is rumored that the Samsung S23 Ultra will have a 200 megapixel sensor. So the megapixel war is getting heated up. The war is on, my friends. Bigger megapixel means bigger sensor, which means better photos. On that note, this is Badik signing off. See you in the next video. Pew, pew, pew.